hello, hello. Happy Saturday. We are winding down our 30-day marketing live challenge. And I'm coming on um, with just a couple thoughts, um, especially after our first night of Q&A in the Divine Dating Workshop. There were lots. We did almost three hours of Q&A. Guys, it was everybody had a lot of questions. It was really, really great dialogue. But some of the questions really got me to thinking about some of the things that I, I know I need to address and express to help the ladies. So this video is for the ladies. Ladies, number one, nobody can make you do anything you don't want to do. So a lot what I'm feeling inside of dating class when I'm answering questions and a lot of the energy behind some of the questions is this pressure you feel because society has created this false sense that vagina is not valuable anymore, that sex doesn't matter, that if you don't have sex, a man won't want you. And we forget that, no, it still matters. Your vagina matters. Um, if you are being abstinent or celibate, you don't have to talk about that right away for fear of like not laying down a boundary. You simply can talk about that when you're comfortable and when you're ready to talk about that. The difference that you have to be able to make clear in your mind is to understand that there are the men who are going to see your worth and value you, and there are men who value women, and then there are men who do not. And the men who do not value women, the men who only want sex, the men who are out here just running through women, these are not husband material men. And sadly, a lot of what gets expressed, <clears throat> a lot of what gets highlighted, a lot of what goes viral on social media is from men who do not value the love and partnership, family and marriage. So that means that, ladies, you hear a lot of garbage you hear a lot of junk out here that gets you so discouraged because you feel like there's not good men. You feel like, you know, that you've got to somehow bend on your boundaries. You've got to bend on, you know, what it is you're expecting. You've got to bend on how you show up. And the reality is, is what you have to understand, because I said this in class the other night, is that men who are marriage material versus these men in these streets who are out here like peacocks, like they're the prize, are like apples and oranges. First of all, your husband material men are not even hardly on social media. I've raised three grown sons. All three of my sons are hardworking young men, either in school full-time, working full-time, and have businesses on the side. All three of them are rarely on social media. Why? Because they don't have time to be on social media because the good men who are marriage material are, are not sitting on these apps and on these sites shooting the shit all day. I've said this before. They're out working hard. They're out building their businesses. They're out working hard on their jobs. They're taking care of their families. They're taking care of their mothers. They're taking care of their kids. They're washing their cars, building a deck. They're at Home Depot. Of course, my son called me right when I'm talking. So good men, men who are husband material men and so you know if men tune into this video and you live on youtube and you live on these apps i'm going to say your testosterone is low testosterone is low fellas if you're sitting on these apps all day long and you're not out doing things getting it being productive if you're not out chasing your goals purpose greater purpose for your life if you don't have goals if you don't have things you're working on your testosterone is low if you're sitting around watching porn all day playing video games or sitting on social media all day sitting on your couch your testosterone is low ladies listen to me i hear this and feel this nervousness this nervousness that you feel like like you've got you you've got to bend you've got to 
have conversations right away you don't want to have because you feel like you need to lay down the boundaries right away because you feel like you got to let men know because they're going to pressure you to be wanting sex in the first one to three dates. I saw this in a comment on YouTube. One lady said, Rebecca, you've been married. You ain't been in these streets. You don't know what it's like. Yes, I do. It ain't no different. Men are men were pressuring to have sex on the first date 10 years ago and 20 years ago. The difference is, is that 10, 20, 30, and 50 years ago, women had moral standards. There was moral pressure in our society that women had to hold these standards, not men. Men have never held the moral standard. The moral fiber of our society is not built on men, ladies. It's built on us. It is women who hold and toe the line with standards. And as those standards have slipped, now women are so confused and feel all this pressure to fit in with this backward ass society which is why marriage is slipping, families are slipping, especially in the black community. So guess what, ladies? You have to toe the line. Um, if a man brings up sex in the first whatever date you're having with him because he's leaning in that direction, you change the subject. We have the power to... Wait, if my son does not... Hold on one second, guys. I got to tell my son to stop calling me. Because he's interrupting the video. Hold on one second. Call, got to message him from a different phone. Calling me. So guess what? You have the power. You don't have to put yourself in situations where you're pressured to have sex. You ain't got to be at his house. A man can't pressure you to have sex unless you allow him to put you in a situation to be pressured by sex. You ain't going to be pressured to have sex if you out at public places, at public restaurants. If you are requiring him to date you. You don't allow yourself to be in situations. You can't be pressured to have sex unless you allow yourself to be pressured to have sex. The real true issue is a lack of backbone and boundaries and self-worth and self-esteem. Because ladies, you should have no problem standing your ground and recognizing that out here in this current world, in this current society, there are marriage material men that you care about and there's the other men that you don't. And any man that's trying to make you, it used to be that any man that made a woman feel uncomfortable was not considered a gentleman. We can go back to old school. A man that would make a lady feel uncomfortable in any way was not considered a gentleman. Guess what we're looking for? We want gentlemen, ladies. You don't want a man pressuring you, trying to get you to do anything you don't want to do. My husband has said it a million times. He can't understand any situations where a man is doing something to a woman that she doesn't want done or she is not consenting to. He said, I can never imagine trying to force a woman to do anything that she is not willing and wanting and desiring to do. He's a gentleman. There are still gentlemen. There are still good men, marriage material men. Now, this is something I said in class that you're not going to hear. It's got to come from a wife. When you meet them, they are not your fine ass peacock city dudes who are running through women like crazy. We, this came up in class. In our workshop. Husbands are built different. He ain't, it's not always going to be your super fly, super handsome, super sexy. Ooh, he's so, he's got swag for days and he looks good and he dresses fine and he smells good and he's this and he's that. Those dudes know that they're the hot commodity. They in these streets, even at 60 years old, they in these streets, they still running through women because they know. That they're in demand. They out here being a whole hoe at all these different ages. But ladies, you're attracted to those men because what? They see they got some money. They look good. Brittany says, you told us you elevated your husband. That's what wives do. 
any relationship, any marriage you look at now and you see a husband that's looking good. You see a husband that's fine. You see a husband that's dressing his butt off, right? That is the wife's influence that is having that husband look like that. That's what wives do. We upgrade our men while they're working hard. They don't have time to be thinking about GQ swaggy clothes. Wives do that. Wives cook the healthy food that helps them to stay lean and stay good looking. Why? It is women. Women. This is our influence on men. We care more about emotional intelligence, mental health, spiritual well-being. The physical well-being of the family and the children has always fallen back on women. While men are out here conquering the world to make their money so they can provide for their families, women have more of the role of the emotional, spiritual, and physical well-being of the family. That has always been our influence. We are nurturing by nature. And this stuff has gotten so turned around. You, so understanding ladies when you start to feel like oh Rebecca there was one lady in class Brittany you said it you were talking about how do you get out of feeling like a scarcity mindset or feeling like these fears because it just seems like she lives in Atlanta and the, the all these men and they're all just like not faithful and and just the the narrative is so toxic and it's so discouraging and you just feel like like how how am I gonna meet a good man how am I gonna meet a husband because he ain't gonna be one of these city peacocks he is going to be one of those men that gets overlooked. He's going to be a man that you're the prize, ladies. You're the prize. This, this stuff has not changed. We, all this rhetoric and craziness on the internet makes you want to think it's changed. Car I said it in class. Carrie Pope is very handsome. Carrie Pope is very handsome. But he ain't as pretty as me. Stop and think about that, ladies. To the man who falls in love with you, you're, you're still the catch. The, the dynamic in, in a healthy relationship is when the man is actually, you are the prize to him. That's how men want to feel. That they feel like, oh my God, she is the best thing ever. I can't believe that she's my wife. I can't believe that I got her. That they have a feather in their cap. Their chest is stuck out, walking, holding your hand. That's how a man wants to feel. And now we got all these sissy boys running around talking about, I'm the prize. Talking about, what do you bring to the table? These are sissy boys. These are, these are men and young men and boys who have no intention. They have no value around marriage. They have no value around family structure. God is not at the center of their universe. God is not at the center of their core of building up community. Family is still the core, core of, of our community. Family unit is still the core. And these men who are talking about what she bring to the table, but so I can pay for that. I can pay for this. It's all BS. These are not marriage material men. These are not husbands. You have never heard a man, a strong, high testosterone man who provide. What are his priorities? God, family, faith, legacy, financial stability taking care of his family, his reputation, his income. This is what men, strong men are all about. They ain't talking about what you bring to the table. They're, they're literally saying, I'm ready to come home and eat at the table that you've cooked some food to provide for because I don't work so hard. Men, strong, high testosterone men are providers and protectors. You don't hear R.C. Blake's talking about what you bring to the table. What did my wife bring to the table when I met her? You don't hear, uh, girl, guys, give me some comments on some strong men you know. 
that, that obviously you know are good men, good husbands and fathers, men that you want this type of man to be the father of your children. Do you want, this is the husband, Tony Gaskins in the comments, Tony Gaskins, right? He ain't asking his wife, what does she, what do you bring to the table? Right? Steve Harvey, what do you bring to the table? Your strong backbone, high testosterone, Dr. Tart. They ain't asking what you bring to the table. They fall in love with a woman for her beauty, her brains, her femininity, her essence, her love, her spirit, her soul, and simply by essence of who she is. They elevate a man's life. I elevate Carrie's life. I believe in him. I'm his best friend. I'm his soulmate. I'm his partner. I'm there for him when all the chips are down. I'm believing in him, backing him up. This is the stuff you can't buy. That's what a good man, a strong man, a Torrey Roberts, yes, right? That's what a husband, David Burris, thank you, yes, and guess what? Do you notice that all the men we just named are married? They're married. They know what they're talking about when they're talking about, because guess what? They, and they're preaching and teaching to mostly women because women will listen because women are the backbone of our society and community. We influence the men. We influence the men. We have power, power in our boundaries, our standards, whatever you allow. Men have always gotten away with whatever you allow. When I met my husband, he wasn't from the city. Always had lived out in the country. Southern gentleman, hardworking man. I said, God done saved you for me right here. He had a, a, a bull, a, a, a ram in the bush, just waiting, holding my blessing for me. L ladies, listen to me. When you meet him, he may be a little bit of a work in progress. He may be a little bit of a project. You may, he may have to hand you that credit card. Do you revamp his whole closet? Right? That's what wives do. Hello. Right? It's me saying, baby, I think you should get braces. You always, you know, you, you, that one tooth that kind of overlaps another one a little bit. We can get that all straightened out, right? Carrie looks better now than he's ever looked in his life. He would never have taken the time to do that. That's not a high priority to a hard working, high testosterone man. He's not around here trying to be pretty. He ain't over here trying to be swaggy. Their focus and priorities are on work, provision, reputation, purpose, God, family. Ladies, the, the aesthetics, this is what we bring to the table. So when you go on dates, and a man starts bringing up sex in the first few dates. You don't have to respond to that. You stay in your power. Oh, how's the weather today? Oh, you know, I did just book a vacation. I'm really looking forward to it. You don't have, you're a lady. You don't even have to go down to that level. And if he doesn't take a hint, if he isn't smart enough or wise enough to take the hint that you're not going there, you block him and you stop talking to him. It's that simple. You don't have to go down to their level. We have, we're in a, a situation, we're in a current state of things where Ladies, you're scared. It's like you're scared. You're scared of, you know, that a man won't like this. You're scared that you'll scare off a man. You're scared you can't get a good man. Like, can I tell you something? That's what I said in class the other night. Good men feel just as overlooked as you. Because, ladies, we tend to go running behind the peacocks. 
and we overlook the good man who may not be all swaggy. He might have a little bit, 10, 15 pounds he needs to lose. We overlook the good man who will love you and honor you and be faithful to you. We over, that's when I stopped matchmaking. And anybody who's heard my story, if you really listen to what I'm saying, when I met Carrie, I realized that my current matchmaking clients, my female matchmaking clients would have never even gone on a date with Carrie. And that's when I said, this man is a catch. He's a wonderful man. I knew it from the very beginning. And I thought to myself, these women wouldn't even go on a date with him. They would, they would totally reject Carrie in a heartbeat. <laughs> And I thought, this is a problem in this business model. My definition of good man is different than what these women are looking for. I don't have any business in this business. Because I am i can't meet their expectations. Because they want to pay me to be matched with some peacocks. They, they want to pay me. And, and like I'm saying to you, apples and oranges. Husband material versus these peacock sissy boys Apples and oranges. I, you're not paying me to give you more heartbreak. I'm not going to set you up with more disappointment and heartbreak. All these men are going to do is run through you, spin you around, have you chasing them, all upset, heartbroken, spinning tails, lying to you, getting between your legs, and you hurt even more. <sighs> I want women to get back into their feminine power, feminine power, okay, feminine power, understanding that by nature of who God created us to be is where our power lies, our feminine power. Men just want to be around us. They need a soft place to land. They want love, understanding, compassion. This, these, while I'm, all my sons are calling me while I'm doing my video. So this is just a reminder. This is just a recap from what some of the things I was thinking about from class. Stay in your power. Don't step out of it. Do not lean in, give in to the pressures of this crazy society. Do not give in to the pressures of trying to fit in to this backward society that has no morals and no standards. You stand your ground. Stand your ground. You still need to date. That's why we started doing the Divine Dating Workshop. You still need to date. Still need to get comfortable dating. But stand your, with your standards and boundaries. All right. I love you guys. Blessings in abundance. I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye-bye.